I'll open this um, special board of selectmen meeting. And the purpose of this um, meeting is one purpose, one agenda item, and that is a discussion with folks from 129 Parker Street. And we're going to talk about, um, they have some people from their architecture firm and some uh, others to discuss the concept of the um, continuing care community and the, um, the structures within that portion of the um, site. So however you guys want to start is okay with us. Council and uh, Representative from Hawthorne, who was the people who we are working with on the assisted living, they are prepared to make a presentation uh, and then answer any of your questions. And, okay. Uh, I think that's the best way to proceed. Okay. For everybody in the room, we have one, one quick change just for this meeting and maybe go forward. There's been a lot of um, concern about the um, noise in the room, particularly when people get up to speak. Um, they can't be heard, not the noise, but the, you know, when people speak. So when anyone wants to speak, we're going to ask them to go to the microphone at the um, podium, tell us your name and address, and then, you know, share your comments, share your questions, so that they can be heard um, on the television piece of the broadcast. With that. Mr. Chair, if I could just add, um, for the folks that are in the audience, there's some additional handouts that will be provided on the back. Um, as well, if you haven't seen them. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the, uh, the board. My name is Craig Chekinowski. I'm an attorney in Franklin, Massachusetts, and I am Massachusetts Council to Hawthorne Retirement Group. Uh, with me this evening is Mark Lowen. Mark is with Lenity Architecture. They are the development coordinators for all of the Hawthorne projects throughout the country. Uh, by way of background, Hawthorne is a family-owned business based in Vancouver, Washington, which develops retirement communities throughout the United States and Canada. Uh, at last count, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were at approximately 400 of these sorts of facilities that they have developed. Um, in Massachusetts, there are three locations that are presently open and operating. Those are located in Beverly, Tewkesbury, and Westboro. There's a fourth facility which will open to residents uh, next month in Franklin, and a fifth facility which is under construction down in Hopkinton at Legacy Farms. Uh, what Hawthorne develops and intends to develop uh, at a site here in Maynard is a uh, apartment-style retirement <coughs> community, but with no medical services whatsoever provided. I like to describe it as assisted living without any of the medical services. There's no step up. People do not uh, move up as they age and uh, need further health care. They don't move up within the facility to different portions of the facility. Nor are any personal services provided. There's no assistance to the residents with hygiene or eating. There's no distribution of medicine to the residents. What Hawthorne does provide, besides an apartment, uh, is three meals a day, seven days a week, in a communal dining facility. There's no kitchen facilities within any of the individual units that the residents um, occupy. They do provide laundry service and light housekeeping. And then within the structure itself and on the grounds are communal areas for gathering uh, and activities, such as a theater, a coffee room, library, exercise room, game room, outdoor gardens, and walking paths. There are 24 hours a day on-site managers that live on site. There's typically two managers so that somebody is on while the other person is off. And they do provide van service upon request to, um, to the residents, to the local areas, to take them shopping, to church, uh, to appointments that they need to go to. All of that is provided to the residents um, as part of a monthly lease. There's no buy-in like there is with other retirement or assisted living facilities and occupants um, sign a month-to-month -month lease and are free to go um, at any time that they wish. Mark can talk a little bit in more detail about the typical resident and where they come from. Uh, Hawthorne has identified a site here in Maynard that's part of a neighborhood business overlay district. I understand that the town is considering an amendment to that uh, zoning and we thought it would be useful uh, for you to understand what Hawthorne does and does not do as you went through that process. With that, I'll turn it over to Mark. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Mark Lowen with Lenity Architecture. Uh, do you need address? 
for the record or not? Okay, great. Uh, if we can get the PowerPoint up on the screen, well, I'll just kind of walk you through what we do and where Hawthorne fits into the overall picture of senior housing. When you look at senior housing, there's about five different, five or six different facets that we work with. Uh, starting at the very low end, so far as, as services would be, we consider an age-restricted type condominium, housing development, or apartments. The next step up is what we provide. We typically call it independent living or congregate care. The next step beyond that would be the assisted living where they have the services provided so far as providing medications, uh, personal hygiene assistance, eating, dressing. Beyond that, we move into the next higher level, which would be various levels of skilled nursing care, whether it be uh, Alzheimer's, memory care, skilled nursing, that and, and con convalescent type care. We're at the lower end, we're at the uh, independent or congregate care issue, uh, uh, part of the uh, spectrum. What we provide and what our typical resident looks like is a senior in their early 80s, <clears throat> in good health, they don't need medical assistance because we're not a medical facility. About 80% of our residents live within 10 miles of the facility. The other 20% are usually moving into the area because they have family that live nearby the facility. Um, most are single. We do have about 20% couples. And I think that the point that I like to emphasize the most is we find that our residents, it's time to give up the car keys. This is kind of the pivotal point. They're not moving into our facility out of a medical need, but for a lot of them it's time to give up the car keys, which as Craig mentioned a little earlier, uh, really emphasizes the, the shuttle service we provide, and I'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, they're interested in the, the new friends and the friends that are in the facility. They get to hang out with their contemporaries. It provides them with that opportunity to what in the industry we call age in place. They can stay in the area. They're near their family. They're near their friends. And like I said, they, they seek this lifestyle out of choice and not out of a medical need. And we're loading something. Hmm. I have no idea what's going on right now. All right. Okay, let's see if we can do it now. There we go. So the lifestyle that we provide our residents is three meals a day, seven days a week, served restaurant style, uh, housekeeping and linen services, social and physical activities, uh, their social calendar. There's usually typically an activity going on about every two hours, everything from, from yoga to wee bowling to walking clubs. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Like Craig mentioned, we have 24-7 on-site management. Part of the, the um, management program and the management profile that Hawthorne developed about 30 years ago that's been extremely successful is there are two full-service apartments on our site where the manager and co-manager couples live. One of those four people is on duty 24-7. In the event there is an issue, someone's not feeling well, there's any problems, there are pull cords in each one of the suites where they can notify them, pager goes off, buzzer goes off in the office, they can check on them. So they're never, the facility is always under some, some sort of management monitoring at all times 24-7. And that's, that's one of the very important parts of their overall management plan for the site. I touched on the band service before, so far as we find about 20% of our residents will move in and bring their cars with them. We find that within about 12 months, over half of those people decide that they really don't need the car anyway because we have a van that will take them on demand wherever they need to go, doctor's appointments, church, volunteer opportunities, shopping, pharmacy, wherever they need to go, they just sign up. The van sets up individual routes on a regular basis and takes them and picks them up wherever they need to go. Within the building, <coughs> Craig touched on a little of this. I'll show you some pictures here in just a minute. We provide a lot of inside amenities. About 30% of our building, the core we call it, is the common area where we, we provide the chapel, the beauty salon, exercise room, game rooms, library, coffee lounge, movie theater. Uh, they can have, they can reserve private rooms to bring family in for gatherings. There's all kinds of different opportunities, billiard rooms that they can do all kinds of activities on site. All the services, all the utilities, everything is included in their month-to-month -month rent. The only other check they would really have to write would be for their phone bill. If they, if they choose to, whether it be cell phone or otherwise. Uh, there's no buy-in. They don't have to write a six-figure check to move in here. It's a month-to-month -month, uh, type rental situation. And just to save the question, the, the lease says 55 years and older. Keep in mind our demographic is typically over 80. What we look for in a site 
the site plan is a transitional site and we're trying to be consistent with the planning and zoning goals. Very important for us is being located near single and multifamily neighborhoods because keep in mind again, 80% of our residents are going to be within a few miles of the site. Uh, we look for good access to city services. We always make sure to provide ample parking on our site so we're not bleeding into other neighborhoods and that sort of thing. And we've been able to, with over almost 400 of these, be able to dial the parking in really well to what's adequate for staff, residents, and visitors. Um, and then we emphasize a park-like setting where we landscape our site and provide walking paths for our residents so they can get a lot of exercise while they can stay on site. Uh, we find that our number one activity, whether it's our facility in Venice, Florida, or Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, the number one thing is they're out making laps around the building. And they're actually clubs that do that. They stay very active. They do a lot of walking that way. This is the preliminary, and I want to underline the word preliminary, site plan that we currently have. And I'll show you another shot that will show you where we fit into the overall master plan. But you'll see, I can't use my laser pointer here, but you can see we're providing parking on two sides. And the, you can see where the Portugasure entry area is. That's what we call the core of our building. I'll show you some pictures on the inside in just a minute. And then we run the residential wings off of that. This gives you an idea of where we are in regards to the overall master plan. We're way to the back, where that red arrow is pointing. And I've got, okay, I'll just throw this up here right now. Can you point it towards you, towards the audience? What would be best at this point? You can point towards them because we have a copy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you start it this way? Yeah. Sure. Right. Thank you for that. <clears throat> so what we do so far as building design is it's very important for us to be very residential in nature. We're not looking at building an institution. We're building a nice residence for our seniors to live in. All of our suites are, I'm going to say 98% of our suites are going to have patios or balconies depending what floor they are. So they have outside access via that plus the main entrance to each one of their suites is from a central core. And I keep using the word suites for a specific reason because our suites do not have kitchens. All their meals are provided as part of their monthly rent. And I'll show you some illustrations of a suite in a minute. So what we would provide them, what you would typically call a wet bar or maybe a half kitchen, countertop, a bar sink, and a three-quarter refrigerator. So they can have snacks. They can have, you know, they have their coffee maker, whatever. But all their meals are included as part. And there's cooking does not take place in the individual suites. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the 30% of the interior space is all our activity areas. We provide studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom versions of the suites. And those are some approximate square footages. Um, what we look at is blending in the natural landscape. Um, we try to create a very relaxed, informal style for our residents. Um, so far as the floor plan, the roof lines, uh, the eave lines, we break things up. We don't try to build a monolith. We try to build a very attractive building. And I would say best opportunity to get an idea is the next time you're down in Westboro, if you know where the post office is, look across the street. And I'll have a couple of pictures of that for you in just a minute. We use a lot of uh, brick and stone, and we try to be and these are all architectural terms so far as unornamental, we try to create a very casual type approach. Here's some examples, and a few of these are actually our Westboro building. That one is not, that's a four story that we're doing, but that gives you an idea. A lot of landscaping, a lot of walking paths. We were working with wetlands on that site, and so you can see beyond that white fence was an open wetlands area. try to put a lot of detail, nice detail in the building, so far as you can see the, the, uh, the siding, the rock work. Again, very residential in nature. Talk about the inside a little bit, which we're talking about the, uh, the suites. We've got an example of the studio and the one bedroom here. Arrow is pointing out where that half kitchen is. <coughs> Next arrow is going to point out where the sleeping area is. Next slide shows you a two-bedroom version. Again, half kitchen, sleeping areas. These are some uh, photographs of a typical suite, what they look like on the inside. Here's our common dining room area. And then off to the side, we've got a private dining room available for special events. Here's our library. 
coffee lounge, which is one of the new very popular additions we've added to the design in the last couple of years. The other big winner is the movie theater. A lot of our facilities are running two movies a day now, seven days a week. So the key points, uh, we are looking, we provide very low impact on city services, low traffic generation. And this is the one of the things I love to point out is our type of facility not only provides low traffic generation, but very little peak hour traffic impact because peak hours are breakfast and dinner time for our facility. So our residents are there. They're not out and about. Um, create jobs, we're looking at a probably between full and part-time positions. Probably looking at an equivalent of about 18 to 20 full-time positions. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the park-like setting. We allow the local seniors to remain in the area. We're very quiet. No wild parties after about 8.30 at night. And uh, we're a long-term neighbor. Every one of these that we've built over the last 30 years is still operating as a retirement facility today. <coughs> what can I tell you? Um, well, I, have two, I have two questions. The first is um, Tuesday, when we discussed this last Tuesday, the, um, the age, minimal age was 62. Tonight, I think I heard you say that it, the minimal age was 55. I just wonder what the difference is there, what the actual age is, because there's a difference. Standard lease says 55 on it. We have worked in a lot of jurisdictions where they put a, put a, a minimum of 62, which we can adapt to very easily. In fact, we actually had jurisdictions that required us to put a deed restriction to that. It's not a problem. But the standard lease currently reads 55. Do you mind if I ask a question, Chris? Um, is that okay? I'll let you ask a question when I'm done with the two I was oh, going to okay. ask. Go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on that. Don't worry about that. Go ahead. Um, would that be something that you would even adjust lower or higher than 62? How much higher? 68. For a minimum? I, have, I, I can't speak on behalf of Hawthorne whether they do that. I know we've, we've gone as high as 65 before. There's some negotiation that's available. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. Sure, certainly. And then you're talking about 18 to 20 full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. What are the 18 to 20 full-time jobs that you've um, anticipated? Yeah. Beyond the on-site management couples, we've got uh, full-time chef and kitchen staff, housekeeping staff, uh, maintenance staff, and, uh, and ground staff to take care of it. Keep in mind that what they do is they, is they try to manage the time very well. So we're going to have people that come for early shift. They're going to help with, with, with breakfast preparation and cleanup, and then they're going to finish out their shift doing housekeeping. So there's, uh, they actually stagger the, the actual job, uh, j job responsibilities, but we, we stagger that back and forth. We'll also uh, typically have some uh, part-time jobs. High school, college students could come in evenings and weekends to help with, uh, with the meal service for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Tim, questions? No. Nope. Terrence? Sure. I got several I jotted down here. So age restriction, obviously, we just talked about. Um, what do you see the, you said you have a, a number of these facilities. What's mm -hmm. the average entry we, age? Average entry age is right about 80, 82. No, I'm sorry, with your policy, if you come before a town and they ask you questions about the entry age to these facilities, what's the average? Is it 62 for the most um, part? 50, typically, there, there's no question about 55 on there. Uh, I would say probably about 10 to 20 percent ask us to move up to 62, which is fine. But, but I would say 80 percent leave it right where it is. Okay. Uh, any availability for for these folks that have room service, or are they expected to eat down, or those small kitchens is is actually where they fix their own snack and coffee, as you were saying. There's no delivery of food to them um, in the room, or me meals are meals are set up uh, to be served uh, <coughs> restaurant style. So they're actually served at, the indivi at, at their individual tables in the, in the dining room. Uh, if they're sick and they want to have a, a, a meal brought up to the room, part of the management, this just provides a good opportunity, part of the whole management style is, is that we want to make sure that our manager team, management team, makes touches bases with each one of our res residents on a daily basis. So you'll find our, res our managers are going to be actually pouring coffee. That's what they do during the, during the meal times. They take turns making sure everybody's there. If somebody isn't there, they're up knocking on the door saying, are you okay? Are you feeling all right? But yeah, they, they, they can have, if, if they're not feeling well one day, they can have, have uh, meals delivered up to the room. Correct. Okay. Um, 
you reference the management you have a, a team of managers on-site managers what, right. what are the typical qualifications or certifications is there something that they do that's a profession for them or how do you go about hiring these folks and there um, Hawthorne hires and trains those in fact we have specific facilities that are training facilities obviously they're also trained in CPR and in um, first aid and that sort of thing but they have their own in-house in training program uh, we find that a majority of our of our uh, managers are in a second or, or final career they're probably they're typically in their 50s into their even into their early 70s and they, a lot of them will take the opportunity they'll live in Massachusetts for two or three years and then they'll transfer and they'll live in Arizona for a few years and manage different facilities throughout the US okay. Um, with regards to the transportation that you uh, were discussing, are those owned by Hawthorne? Is That's that correct. We, company? It's not. We, uh, we, we typically provide one 22-passenger shuttle bus. Very, I, I, I liken it to a shuttle bus you're going to get at, uh, at Boston Logan to take you to a hotel, that sort of thing. That's designed for seniors that uh, is going to be set up, like I said, on an on-demand basis. Um, the residents know to contact the office. I need to be at Dr. Brown at 2 o'clock on Thursday. They then coordinate that and pick them up at 3.30, whatever it happens to be. So they set up daily routes to, to pick up and deliver our residents where they need to go. Okay. And um, you had commented on lo to low impact on city services. Mm -hmm. how, how do you quantify the well, low impact? On comparatively with, uh, with a, let, let's take an apartment type facility where they're going to be using uh, water is going to be, what, about 120 to 140 gallons a day. Comparatively, one of our suites typically runs about 70 gallons a day because it's centralized. We have a central kitchen, so there's less impact that way. Um, heating, and all the various facilities, all the various services tend to be much more efficient and within one facility. And so there's, a, there's less demand from that respect and, like I mentioned, less impact on traffic. Okay. And uh, last question, mm -hmm. if I may. Um, What's the typical setup? You had some three stories in here. You had four stories in here. Do you encounter places that that have height restrictions in place that they're trying to make you meet? And how do you guys handle those types of things? <coughs> we, we typically are doing three and four story versions. We haven't had anything lower than that in several years. And so what we're going to work within the within the, the, the typical guidelines of the jurisdiction. Uh, we're typically looking at about 120,000 square foot, three story or four story building with a footprint that's going to vary depending on how many stories from about 32 to 40,000 square feet. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. David? Thank you. Um, first off, I'll preface by saying uh, thank you for your presentation. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, I, I was and am a very big supporter of this type of a of a uh, of a business coming in, of this type of service being provided to our community. And the, the reason I say that is uh, following some long drawn out things you don't need to know about, um, there were some visioning sessions and other meetings held with residents. Mm -hmm. And people talked about what types of things they would like to see. And these were well attended meetings, hundreds, hundred people. And uh, there was an overwhelming support for this type of a, uh, of a business or a, of a service to come in for our community. So it's something that the community wants and something I think that the community needs as we age. So it's, um, it's a good thing for us and, and I'm appreciative of it and I'm hopeful that it works out for us. I'd like to go back to one of the questions that, um, that was asked by Terrence. And you, you mentioned, you kept mentioning three or four stories. How about height in feet? Um, Depending on how, how it's measured, because some, some jurisdictions measure it from the midpoint of the roof, some from the, the, uh, from, from the, uh, the, the, the ridge of the roof. Uh, we're looking at a three-story that's going to be about 37, 37 and a half feet, and a four-story that's going to run about 46, 47 feet, okay. approximately. So the three-story, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, fits within our... Uh, the 37 and a half feet fits within the current zoning Correct, the as current. we have again last week when we were discussing this there were different numbers being tossed and that's why it was important mm -hmm. to hear what the real numbers are uh, so thank you for that too um, uh, other question who maintains the property itself once you guys uh, are there and it's it's built okay. who maintains it make sure you know the pictures were wonderful the grass was green right. but you know if, you, if nobody's there and, and Craig touched on this just a little bit. Hawthorne yeah. Development, Hawthorne Retirement is a family-owned company. They buy it. They have their own construction supervisor is going to come in to supervise the building, and then they own it and they manage it. And so they're, 
they, their on-site managers will work with hiring staff and also hiring outside contractors for lawn maintenance, for all the activities it needs. This, these are family owned and operated and have, and have been since day one. That's how they work. So they actually have their own staff that takes care of that. And then they actually have regional um, facilities people who will come in to do major things if we needed to re-roof the property, for instance, or make some you know, ma major changes or do some repairs to the parking lot. They have, they have regionals that come in and take care of major projects. Thank you. Um, one of the other concerns that, uh, that I have with a younger demographic <laughs> is, and you touched upon it with the cars and the additional traffic that is really unintended <coughs> with this. And again, when people were talking during these visioning sessions and whatever about opportunities, one of the things was what could, what could have the l less amount of impact on the surrounding community? Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you went over there today or if you're familiar with mm -hmm. the property, yeah. but it's right in the middle of a neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, several neighborhoods that surround it. And there's some concern among the residents in that area relative to traffic and impact of back and forth and lights going into buildings and whatever during, during uh, peak hours. Um, so how can we be certain that the number of cars is as you represent um, at a minimum, you know, 20% have moved in historically. Right. Um, we, we, we base our numbers based off, I believe it's called the, uh, the ITA numbers, and we're considered a category 256. What you're looking at in a facility this size is less than 300 total trips per day. Peak hour morning and afternoon combined is probably in the 30 to 40 range peak hour total. I'm not so much concerned about the, the trafficking of the residents that mm -hmm. live there, but more so the ones that own their own individual automobiles mm -hmm. and any added traffic that might come. It sounds from the numbers of 18 to 20 mm -hmm. uh, employees, that's going to be minimal impact, mm -hmm. so that's not a right. concern. But more so the people that live there and the fact that they, if indeed they keep their car, they need to travel. And that's, that's one thing that... And we, we find, like I said, about 20% of our residents will move in with a car initially. Um, within a year, uh, about half of those are gone uh, because they find that, first of all, it's the, the expense for them to maintain a car when they have the shuttle service available that all their friends are already using, it drops off substantially. Yes, we have a few diehards that are going to hang onto that car no matter what. And in fact, if you, if you look at the site, you can also see that we actually provide some parking, uh, garage parking, because there's a few of, few of our residents who will want to have that they're their baby undercover and we we provide a few parking i think this one's showing probably what about six garage spaces that'll be available for them to rent as well but uh our traffic impact overall with our residents is pretty nominal okay that leads me to a question on the, z the zoning that perhaps uh, attorney Witten can help with you know as far as is there a way given the fact that vehicles would be limited that to allow you to have more green space for the residents that live there and more opportunity for them to walk and enjoy the, the surroundings, that we limit the number of parking spaces given the fact that, you know, the mandated parking spaces that we have in Maynard, I believe, is two per unit. Is that right, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, so if you're going to have 10% of your residents and we have whatever number, we would have a huge amount of parking with, from what you're telling us, five cars. So. But and, and I, I'd love to address parking because that's one of the things that we spend a lot of time studying and I can provide data to back this up. We find an, an ideal parking ratio for us for our facilities and I can give you a data on about 300 of these facilities. It's about a 0.6 to 0.7 spaces per suite. That provides us with enough parking for our residents, our staff, and visitors on a regular basis. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be busier on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. but on a day-to-day -day basis, a 0.6 to 0.7 ratio is ideal for what we do with this use, and we've got a lot of data to back that up. Okay, that's great. And so. so if we could then work something as we proceed, if we proceed down the road with the zoning aspect, and I would appreciate that because that allows the opportunity to give more of what the community asked for is less asphalt and more green. The more, the more green we have, the more, the more open space we provide for our residents. And just to touch on one more thing, we make sure that our walking paths are accessible to the community around us. We want the community to enjoy our site because I'll be real honest, it's great advertising for us. Down the road, someone's going to want to move in there or they're going to have a family member they're going to want uh, to consider moving with us. Excellent. Uh, then the last question that I have is, you know, like, first off, how, how old is the oldest 
uh, you've said that none of them have closed. How old is the oldest one that you have? About 30 years. 30 years. Right on okay. 30 years right now. Uh, just to give you a short amount of history, the, 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 literally the founding father, Bill Colson, it's now in the second generation, he started this, the whole concept with my boss, who's now retired, about 30 years ago. He had his mother in an assisted living facility, realizing it was way too many services for what she needed. And he was actually, shortly before he passed away in 2008, 2009, he was given an award by the National uh, Senior Housing Association as the father of congregate care independent living. This is where the concept originally came from, that step down from assisted living, but more than just age-restricted uh, age restricted housing. Uh, it's have, and that's great to hear that's 30 years, so it's a long-term, you know, uh, proposition. So my question is, how do we avoid um, 15 years from now or 10 years from now the possibility that suddenly we want to have kitchens in there? Do we write that into zoning so that there can't Fine. be kitchens into the, uh, and do you guys have a problem with nope. that, that it goes Not right into the zoning that there and cannot be kitchens and ever in there? We've, uh, and we, we've been a, a part of, a, a lot of jurisdictions sure. don't have something to address this specific type of housing. Um, and we have given examples of uh, text amendment um, definitions that include, you know, only allowing half kitchens or, or wh whatever definition you want to use for a kitchen. Can yeah. I say something, please? Uh, just re remember, this is one selectman's opinion about what should have to happen yeah, here. So yeah, this absolutely. is not this okay. is not a board referendum here, and this is not a, a majority vote of what we're asking anything but to do. This is one just like my opinion and my questions were one person's. Certainly, same thing with selectman Gavin's, right? So no one's asking you to rewrite zoning here. That's nope. not what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about a presentation of what you're offering. Perfect. This is simply we understand that this is simply a presentation of what Hawthorne does and doesn't do. We have no applications pending. As we sit here tonight, we are not in <coughs> use in the town of Maynard, so we could not even seek any uh, any. Just want to make sure you uh, clear in case you you. I know we're going down the track. You can start getting a lot of details right yeah, now. Happy but to answer any yeah. questions. We know this is a discussion about the design. This is not a discussion about the permitting, as Mark indicated. This is very preliminary. We haven't even been on the site yet to do survey of geotechnical. So we're, yep. we're a ways away. Thank you. No, and, and I, I appreciate the comment. And uh, I was not in any way trying to imply that I no. had any, you know, that I was dictating. It and was just more or less, is it possible to do? Because if it is possible to do, it can be I, I've seen it done before. How's that? I, I, I don't want to jump to the nitty gritty, but this is not our first rodeo. Yeah. So we've, we, we've dealt with this sort of issue before. Yes, it's possible to do. I've seen it done. <laughs> that that's the, that that was the purpose right behind <laughs> my question, is just to make sure that we, there, uh, there is flexibility here, and it's not limited to just X, Y, and Z, because that might be what you have in one particular location. Mm -hmm. I think that is all of my questions. Thank you, Chris. Mr. Jason. Mm. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's have a couple of quick questions. Uh, I believe you said that Hawthorne owns, so I guess let me, let me ask the question. Did Hawthorne owns the land and the facility? When the project is completed, Hawthorne owns the land and the facility. That is correct. Okay. So and they own it and operate it. Okay, and you and I, and I did catch your, your your statement previously about the um, you know, the the on-site managers will take care of mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day stuff, yep. and then you have folks from sort of higher up yep. that will come in and do major bigger projects. projects. Correct. Okay, so that is all handled mm -hmm. by you directly. Okay, mm -hmm. um, could you give me an idea with the, how many residents you generally uh, have? Let me see, we're looking at one hundred and. 30, is there 36 suites on this one? Uh, 142. 142. On so what, basically what we do, 142, and we're going to add another 10% because the, we have uh, have about 10% that are two-bedroom units. So you're looking at what, about 160 residents plus or minus? Okay. At full capacity. And you're saying ballpark, about 30 people bring a car? Yeah, with them. That's about right. I, I, and then finally, do those disappear within a year? A good number of them. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I try to make it a point to visit existing facilities when I'm in the area, and I try to do it during, during mealtime. I can tell you, and this is not scientific results, this is personal experience. When I drive through a parking lot at a facility that's at full capacity, when everybody's in having, having dinner, I still count about 20 to 25 empty parking spaces on a pretty regular basis. Okay. But that's non-scientific. That's just my personal experience. 
Okay. And you mentioned it's that you fall under ITE uh, 256? I believe it's 256, yeah. Um, Of course, I think that's it for right now. Okay, the only, I just want to follow up on his one question about the um, buying the land versus I would have, I would, you know, I wasn't aware of that piece. I don't think that we, that's the first we've heard of that. Is that, is that what we're looking at? Well, it's a condominium. The, the, it's a condominium the within your project. Right, they're going to be the owner okay. of one unit or phase of <coughs> the condominium. Of so, there's so they will actually... <coughs> they're going to own the development rights, and then I don't know how they structure their own ownership, but technically they could convey that unit to an entity that then owns and operates it. But okay. They will own the, the just like owning a condominium unit. Okay. That's it, Kevin. You had a yeah. oh, you have questions. I have questions. Hi, right. <laughs> Tim. I have an <laughs> overview for continuing care communities in front of me, and it mentions 24-hour security. How is, how does that operate within your facilities right now? The way we have it set up is our individual residents have white key cards. Um, after hours, the exterior, in fact, I believe now, day and night, the other than the main entrance, which is right by the, where, the, where the main management office is, they have to have a key card to get in and out of any of the ex other exterior entrances access points so everybody has to come through Every, everybody except our residents have to come past that main office and they, and they, they watch that pretty closely so within within the facility uh, key card access to the individual suites and to the outside doors as well with the exception of the main entrance so is that like a guard on duty or is it just management staying away typically management okay um, what's your monthly fees just oh I love that question what it is based on market um, your studios, is this going on the record? Because I'm not allowed to do it on the record. Be recorded. It's being recorded. The ideal numbers that we look at is we look at a facility that would allow a retired school teacher with pension and Social Security to comfortably live there. That's the sort of market we're looking at. You're looking at studios that is probably going to be running, and this is all inclusive. Like I said, covers all meals, all transportation. Probably in around. This is so hard to do. Plus or minus two thousand, and you get up to a th two bedroom. You're probably looking above three. Okay. okay. That's that is a. Shooting from the hip number <laughs> and not official. So, in any way, shape, or form. Closest facility to us, Westboro. Westboro. I think Westboro right now. So, they do mm -hmm. same thing? They do the same thing and they are doing extremely well. It has been a home, what we call a home run. And if anybody's interested, uh, feel free to contact them. They would be glad to give you a tour. Okay. On the just to follow up on Tim's question about the security, is that what is the? Does, can you describe the um, front entryway, the one that would be open, you know, uh, you know, sunrise to sunset type yeah, thing? Yeah. So that in and, and when you describe it, where is there a? I understand that there's um, the residence of the two couples that would be the on-site management, but is there actually a person, or you know, what it, what what means you have to keep so that uh, you know if they put in shopping center or whatever else that someone doesn't wander over there and just take a walk through on their own well the first door you come to is you come through the main entry we've got let me see if i can yeah if we can do the if we can get back to the powerpoint that might be the that's easiest way that's to do okay. it I just, just, just describe okay. it. well is as uh, there is a main portraiture turnaround where you drop people off mm -hmm. double doors there two sets of double doors to get into those double doors i believe after eight o'clock in the evening are closed you have to buzz to get in at that point in time unless you have a key card so once you get in that door you've got uh the management office is right there as you come in the door they see everybody who comes in from that entry, you've got the dining room, you've got a lot of open space. It's not like someone can sneak in there and duck behind something right away. It's, 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 it's very well laid out, and there's a large stairway, uh, open atrium area. The other thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out is when you have got 150 plus seniors, you've got the best neighborhood watch on the planet. These people watch things like a hawk mm -hmm. and so we've got that that secondary security that that comes by virtue <coughs> of having 
a large number of senior citizens who look out for each other and take care of each other. But we have the locked doors, we have the main entrance, and the people have to have to pass by the, uh, the, the management office before they get anywhere else within the building. I know I've walked into a lot of our buildings, all comes to day or night, and I'm met as I come in the door. Okay. They don't know who I am when I get there, so. They just know you're there for dinner. And they'll be glad to provide that, too. Meal time. Yeah. Meal time. <laughs> I don't miss a meal either, so I don't feel bad, <laughs> but Kevin. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you both for uh, coming out this evening. Um, appreciate the presentation. I think the board asked some great questions. I just have a couple um, quick ones. Um, I'll turn it back. Um, you mentioned uh, the shuttle service mm -hmm. and it being on sort of a uh, call basis. Do you anticipate or any of your facilities run a, uh, a fixed route, particularly uh, would there be an opportunity to have a fixed route to like our downtown area? Um, something along that it's, line. It's typically set up on demand, um, but if there's a lot of demand for them to go to a certain place on a regular basis, I know they have set that up where every Tuesday they're going to go to such and such a store, such and such an activity, <laughs> and it tends to actually create groups that will go to that sort of a thing. It's it's a very case by case basis depending on on the on on the, the facility and where they're at. Uh, the other thing they do a lot of these a lot of times with this is they'll set up what I call field trips where once a month they will go to the local casino or wherever it happens to be or some other local activity that's going on if during christmas not only are they going to invite hopefully invite uh school groups to come in and do some music or whatever for them but they're also going to look for opportunities to go to different concerts and uh, activities and pageants there's always something going on and so they're going to utilize you're going and at times they may actually hire an additional bus for additional transportation if they get a big group um, okay. Thank you. Just a follow-up yeah, to the, yeah. the shuttle service. Do you um, typically see uh, this sort of supplementing or replacing the typical town COA vans? Uh, we, find it, we find that with, with our residents, they're going to, if they have a choice, they're going to go with the pickup and delivery at the door that we provide at no additional charge to them. You'll have a few that have, you know, have lived in, the, lived in the town for a long time and they know the bus system and they like the bus system. They'll continue to use it. But we find that for in, in most cases that they're, they're going to they're only going to use the the local bus system as a supplement. And keep in mind too, if we get a situation where there's a uh, something after hours, we may not instead of pulling the bus out, we may actually just hire a local cab to take them to and from where they need to go for economic reasons. It just makes sense. But we're going to provide them transportation 24/7, 365, wherever they need to go within reason. Okay. And that includes if they need to go to Boston Logan, we'll make arrangements. We'll get them there. Thank you. Um, last question I had. Uh, you mentioned um, quite heavily the, the faci uh, facility core being about 30% mm -hmm. of um, the overall mm -hmm. um, project, if you will. Is there any opportunity there that you see for uh, public-private use of some of that we actually space? We actually make available, in fact, I was, uh, I was at a facility just two nights ago, and uh, we were, they were having a community meeting there where they were having a neighborhood meeting discussing uh, some stormwater issues that they were having okay. in the community. Yeah, we, we have community rooms that uh, we're glad to, to, to make available. You bet. Right. Just like we try to make the, the outside of the facility available for people who want to walk and exercise and enjoy. You bet. Sure. Yeah, obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. schedule driven, yeah. but it, it appears that um, there's a significant amount of uh, nice, yep. large meeting yep. room we, space. We've got uh, at least two or three good meeting areas that, that could be scheduled for someone who wanted to have some sort of community meeting or activity. Great. Yeah. Thank you. you. That's all I have. Okay, before we um, start the questions from the public, uh, Selectman Gavin has a couple more. Yeah, a couple follow-up questions, if I may. Um, do you have for a facility about this size what the impact on local services is regarding ambulance calls? Um, what we're probably looking at on a facility this size is probably one to two possible service calls a week when you get 160 seniors. Keep in mind that they're all going to be coming to our facility versus those same calls somewhere else in yes. town, but yeah. yeah. Okay, and the second question I have is actually for Attorney Witten. Um, does a development like this uh, count against the housing stock when the state <coughs> comes calling on, we've already qualified for our 40B count, but uh, when the state comes calling for housing units, does this count against us? This will be added to the denominator, so the answer is yes. This will be, these will be considered residential units because they provide for year-round habitation, <coughs> regardless of whether there's a kitchen or not. They will count in the denominator. So that leads to a follow-up question. Is there anything that you have for like uh, an affordable 
unit for respectfully I disagree with that conclusion we've run into this in, in other towns in Beverly most recently in Hopkinton and it specifically found that the lack of a kitchen does not qualify the unit as, as a unit for the housing stock calculation so okay something to be explored something to, to talk about yeah and, and, I, and I would say as this progresses if the Department of Housing and Community Development certifies to the town that the units will not count, then I would agree. Uh, my experience with DHCD is these units will count. So perhaps we can work that. We can certainly we work, can work that, that out. Said, the most recent project that we, we permitted was Hopkinton, and we got over that issue with the state. So I have every confidence that we'll be able to do it here as well if we proceed. So do you have from DHCD a, a letter stating that the units don't count on the SHI? And is it the same layout? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. roughly the same. Yeah. So if, if, you could provide, if you could provide that to us, that'd be great. Good. Glad I asked the question. Is that a fight? So okay. just to clarify, the Hopkinton, is, is that a Hawthorne facility? Because that wasn't one that I had yes. on the list. Yes, that is. Yes. I had mentioned five earlier. Well, that was <coughs> the one that's being <coughs> built. Kingsbury and Westwood. Not yet open. Okay. Open next month. Thanks. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, um, that will open up to <coughs> questions from the public. Okay. Jack McCain, Country Land, just some basic questions. I uh, didn't see in the presentation uh, these buildings have elevators. Yes, two. And they're, they are designed to handle gurneys. We okay. have two elevators that are basically on either side of what we call the core area. Okay. Um, is this uh, tenant at will just rent as you go, or is there a lease period required? There's, it's, it's a it's a month-to-month -month rent and a 12-month lease. <coughs> uh, and if you would, I think I heard there were three facilities in Massachusetts. Currently up and operating. Yeah, go there ahead. are three operating. <coughs> one that opens next month and a fifth one that's under construction in Massachusetts. Okay, my question was, can you share a little bit about the success of those? What's your occupancy rate? Are they successful? Is there a waiting list? Things about that nature. I know that Beverly is extremely successful. In fact, Beverly is the largest facility that we've ever built, and it actually has, it's a four-story with 160 suites, plus we have ad additional uh, what we call cottages, which are duplex, and that one was, uh, I think, has been operating at 95 plus percent since it was within six months of when it opened. Um, uh, Westboro is very similar, and let me see, uh, Tewksbury has just opened, so uh, within the last three months, so it's, I don't have any specific numbers on that. Um, Hawthorne is very excited about being in the, in the Boston area because what we have uh, opened up so far, and based on the demographics we've got, um, they are extremely successful. I mean, it's gone very, very well. That's why we're still here, and that's why we have more under construction. Thank you. Yep. She's next. <coughs> well, she's coming. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Are these, when you start to, um, you know, rent these these things out of there. Is there preference given to the residents of the community that they're in? Are they? Well, we find typically, like I said, eighty percent of our residents are coming from the community locally anyway. Um, we've never had a situation. I'm not aware of a situation where we've had an issue. It, it's basically first come, first serve. Okay. And Hawthorne, prior to opening, is going to start marketing, and their marketing starts right in town here. Okay. And with it, basically, they, they, they do a 10 mile type mailing based on demographics and age and that sort of stuff. And then it'll, it'll grow beyond that. But you know, like I say 80% of the residents are going to be, be local, first come, first serve. Okay. Thanks. So I'll keep you waiting. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Karen Grimes, Field Street. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's been very enlightening to me. Um, I do have a question regarding the residents. Do they have a resident board or resident council? So that if there are any problems that do arise within a, uh, the facility, you know, within you know, little things like maybe the plumbing's not working right or whatever, is there uh, some kind of access with uh, 
you know, your management team, or how would something like that be brought? I'm not aware of any sort of board or <coughs> committee like that, but keep in mind that, that management is on site and in touch, the goal is to be in touch with each one of the residents okay. on a daily basis. Uh, one of the things that we've found that's been extremely successful is the fact that our residents are there on a month-to-month -month rent, and if there is a problem, they always have that option of leaving, and our management is motivated to keep the facility full and keep our residents happy. I cannot think of any recent complaints. In fact, one of the things I make a point to do is when I visit a facility is talk to some of the residents one-on-one -on -one and see how they, how they like the facility, how things are going. They love it. This is, if, if it fits their lifestyle, they are very, very pleased. We take very good care. It's what we call a catered lifestyle. And I know Craig mentioned it was, uh, it was a assisted living without services. What I've heard it recently described as is a stationary cruise ship. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we take very good care of our residents. Uh, one last question is part of this. Um, you say maybe 80 plus mm -hmm. for residents. Mm -hmm. Now, supposedly you get in there and you're in your 80s, you're mm -hmm. t you are taking some medications, but you're able to do that yourself. But if you start having the health issues, I mean, do you, you don't have to have a physical, no. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. to say that, to go in, but some facilities I know do. Right, no, you because, have to because we're a non-medical facility, we're not, as long as they're, as they're capable of taking care of themselves, as they tend to age, and we're looking at our typical residents gonna live there, Oh, uh, three to seven, maybe ten years. Yeah, uh, although we have some people in triple digits that live in some of really? our <laughs> facilities. I met one just the other day again, and she's as feisty as ever. She's doing great. But uh, that's where, where the management approach is so critically important, because we're going to work with the resident and with the resident's family when the needs come to a point, and we're going to help them. We're not going to throw them out on the street. But we're going to help them find a situation that best serves their needs. Okay, very good. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question, actually. Okay. Uh, from the live feed, many people watching TV. So, uh, quick question. Would there be any reason beyond age to turn a potential resident away from application there? No. No. So so as long what's, as your, what's your criteria for choosing residents? Uh, as long as they're financially capable of paying the rent and they don't get into trouble, they're fine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Bill. Hi, Bill Cranshaw, Mockingbird Lane. Um, let me first just say that I can absolutely guarantee you that the vast majority of people in town love the idea of this, and everything you said tonight is right on the mark. Um, the only hurdle is the fact that we never thought about this kind of thing before and we don't have it in zoning, so we got to figure out the zoning. So pardon me for one last zoning question. And it gets back to the parking topic. And I'm wondering, if we were to write the zoning like some other towns do and set a parking maximum for this use per suite, can you live with a parking maximum of 0.7 per suite? Yeah. Would it still work? Yeah, absolutely. If we're talking about our specific, our specific model? Whatever generic use this is defined as, congregate care or whatever. Yeah. Congregate care would have a parking maximum of 0.7 per suite. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Hello, Elizabeth Steinwell again, Lincoln Road. I have to make a plug now, because um, I used to be the chairperson of the Maine Cultural Council and worked with the state on getting the process going to have a cultural district designation for town, which is something Massachusetts do does, uh, and it really uh, puts a lot of emphasis on the fact that it's a walkable town. I just wanted to know that's in the process, and also that in the schools there's a, there are programs with the seniors, Council on Aging, a bridges program which brings seniors into the schools, and I also was, was, was hoping that there'll be something they will be able to work with you. Absolutely. That's all. Thanks. In fact, that, 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 that takes me back to one of my notes very quickly. One of the things that, that I have to watch very carefully is a lot of times people will say, do you really want to have your seniors right here where all this other activity is going on? And the answer is absolutely yes. We want them to have access to opportunities. One of the places that we often are taking our, our shuttle bus to is to the schools for volunteering because our seniors stay very active. We'll invite 
representatives from the school to come in and talk about vo uh, volunteer activities because uh, keeping our seniors active is ver a very important part of what we do. It keeps them young and healthy. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions from the public? Bill, any questions? Uh, just a point of clarification, uh, Bill Lemons, your town planner. Um, in the uh, current bylaws, our parking requirements for elderly housing, which this would be the closest I find, is one uh, spot per every two dwelling units plus one uh, per employee on the largest shift. Okay. That's, a, that's about the same thing. If that comes out to 0.7. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the math right now. Pretty darn close. <laughs> okay. I, I had one follow-up question. In your comments in response to the ladies' questions, um, you spoke about um, you know, facilitating a move to a, a proper facility when someone gets to that point. Who handles that? Is there a social worker? Are you expecting that the two manage managerial couples have some social skills background? Social part, part, of, part of their training of is, is helping evaluate. Obviously, they're not a social worker, but they're, right. they're going to work with the family. They're also going to develop relationships with assisted living and other memory care type facilities, uh, although we don't have any that operate in the area, but somewhere where we can give them a reasonable opportunity for referral. And they're, we're, we're going to work with the, with, with the local people in the area in regards to that. They're one piece of the puzzle. Obviously, their medical provider is going to be part of that whole process and other people. But uh, okay. yeah, we, 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 keeping our residents, the best advertisement we have is happy residents because they're going to tell their friends, their family are going to tell their friends, and so we want to we want to keep things, keep everybody as uh, as well cared for as possible. And when we can't ha handle those services, it's time to go somewhere else. Uh, sadly, uh, we're going to have to we're going to assist them in getting to where they need to be to get the services they need. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, can I follow up that question. Go ahead. Um, uh, regarding that, I guess, you, uh, do you have other facilities that have uh, medical care? We do have some assisted living and we do have some memory care facilities, but not here in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, <coughs> is there any potential that, that as the market changes or as your market develops in Massachusetts that, that this facility could be altered to accommodate that or... For, so far as Hawthorne's approach, no. In fact, Hawthorne's approach is they don't and which is a little contrary to some, is they don't mix uses. Uh, in fact, I was just at a meeting earlier this week. We have a assisted facility on this side of the street. On the other side of the street, we're going to be building a memory care. They want it standalone because, the, because when you start mixing them, it tends to create management issues, staffing issues, and when you can have a standalone and you can focus on one thing at a time, it's been very successful for them. So from a Hawthorne perspective, I can't speak for other providers, but from a Hawthorne perspective, uh, if there was an additional parcel in the area and they're looking to, to grow memory care or assisted living, they would look at building a separate facility. Okay. And I, yeah, thank you. I, that answers the question. I, just to point out, and I'm sure you guys already well know, that Maynard has, you know, we're, we're on our way to probably 30% of our population mm -hmm. over 65. Mm -hmm. So... Understood. That's one of the reasons we're sitting here tonight. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Question. Another question. Hi, I'm Linda Connolly. I live at 6 Hayes Street. Um, you mentioned you have a monthly fee mm -hmm. for rental and three meals a day. Mm -hmm. How does that change when you go from having a single person to perhaps a couple? Typically, there's just an additional fee for the for the additional food. Okay. Um, how much that is, I'm not, I'm not even going to hazard it. Will yes, vary. I don't have, but, but, but it's actually, again, it's similar to a, to a cruise ship. And I'll, I'll use that example because whether you're, you're renting the nice big suite on the fantail or whether you have the inside, once you step outside the door, mm -hmm. all the services are the same. Okay. So all the activities, all of, you know, all, of the, all the facilities are available to each one of the residents. <coughs> some have the studios, some have the two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, there's a standard and then there's an additional fee for an additional resident. I see. If it's a husband and wife situation. All right. But I can't give you specific numbers. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one more question of my own. Since my wife is getting old, she has pets. Did you want to get on the waiting list? Is that what you're looking for? She can be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be with pets. Pets, yes. 
We allow, I, I believe it's one pet per resident. You can't bring 25 cats, I'm sorry. One pet but, per resident. Yeah, and I think we're looking at a medium to small size dog is what t typically okay. or yeah. Okay, should be so happy. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any questions? One for these last, guys? if I may. Oh. Um, this is probably... Okay, let's start. Let Paula go first. Go ahead, Paul. Yes, you just come up here. Resident. Um, would Maynard residents have any uh, move to the top of the list if there was a waiting list? Um, typically, it's first come, first serve. Okay. So, and we do have waiting lists with some of the facilities. So, the sooner they get on the list, the better. Okay. But um, that's a good. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna refer that back to, to to the the marketing people and find out. That's my understanding. But um, if I find out otherwise on another meeting, I'll be glad to address it further. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Have you ever had an instance where anybody else has asked you that question? Uh, I've had that question, I would say, in the last couple of years, probably two or three times. Have you ever had an instance where you guys have had to write that into a zoning agreement or a development no. agreement? No. Not to the best of my knowledge. It, if you remember what we, what we indicated, what Mark indicated earlier, most of the residents of these facilities are coming within a 10-mile circle of the location, so a five-mile radius. That pretty much will take up the town and maybe no, I understand the that. neighboring area. Just that. Ten miles outside the town is also Concord, Acton, <coughs> Stowe, Bolton, Sudbury, not Maynard. So that's why people are asking the question. So I just no, want to be sure. And my question was, um, people bring their own furniture, right? Yeah. You don't Correct. supply furniture. Correct. Written, um, but the common areas are Correct. furniture. Correct. Common areas are very nicely furnished. Uh, every, uh, we have every, everything fully equipped. I wish I had the pool tables they put in these facilities. They're very nice. That's it. No, one more. Okay. Sorry. Um, just a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. um, can I talk from here? Cause sure, go ahead. Dog. Just raise your voice a little bit so uh, no complaints. So when you say <coughs> $2,000 range, no, no I, I'm not going to hold you to that, but um, when you have to list additional services, mm -hmm. so that's not including? That's everything. That's yeah, everything. That's everything. That's all food, all transportation, all activities. Laundry. Laundry. Everything. Yep. Housekeeping. Yes. So yep. you know, we have any other like little cage where you have yep. to check off. Well, if you're going to rent one of the special garages to put your '59 Cadillac Eldorado in there with the big fins, you're going to pay extra for that. No, I'm not getting And you got to pay for your own phone bill. But okay. that's it. Yep. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any questions from anyone else? Okay, we don't want, I guess there's no more questions. Um, do you guys have anything you want to add or no? All right, I want to thank um, everyone from Maynard for coming with the questions and partaking in the, um, this informational meeting tonight. And I want to thank you guys for the presentation and your time thank you. and the effort to get here on short notice. And um, I think everyone here looks forward to seeing what we find in that space in the future. All right, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to leave those with me. Jerry? Jerry? Use your uh, little wax wagon.